Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. To prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You were seated at the Father's right hand. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, creator of all things, who laid down for the human race the law of work, graciously grant that by the example of St. Joseph and under his patronage, we may complete the works you set us to do and attain the rewards you promise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and the cattle, and over all the wild animals and all the creatures that crawl on the ground. God created man in his image. In the divine image, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, saying, Be fertile and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and all the living things that move on the earth. God also said, See, I give you every seed-bearing plant all over the earth, and every tree that has seed-bearing fruit on it to be your food. And to all the animals of the land, all the birds of the air, and all the living creatures that crawl on the ground. I give all the green plants for fruit for food. And so it happened. God looked at everything he had made and he found it very good. Evening came and morning followed the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth and all their array were completed. Since on the seventh day God was finished with the work he had been doing, God rested on the seventh day from all the work he had undertaken. So God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work he had done in creation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Before the mountains were begotten and the earth and the world were brought forth, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Lord, Lord give success, success to the work of our hands. hands. You turn men back to dust, saying, Return, O children of men. For a thousand years in your sight are as yesterday, now that it is past, or as a watch of the night. Lord, Lord give success, success to the work of our hands. Teach us to number our days aright, that we may gain wisdom of heart. Return, O Lord, how long? 
have pity on your servants. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Fill us at daybreak with your kindness, that we may shout for joy and gladness all our days. Let your work be seen by your servants and your glory by their children. Lord, give success to the work of our hands. Jesus came to his native place and taught the people in their synagogue. They were, they were astonished and said, where did this man get such wisdom and mighty deeds? Is he not the carpenter's son? Is he not his mother, is not his mother named Mary and his brothers James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas? Are not his sisters all with us? Where did this man get all this? And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his native place, and in his own house. And he did not work many mighty deeds there, because of their lack of faith. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. If you've been tuning in to our masses the past uh, week or so, same bat time, same bat channel, of course, um, you'll, you'll notice that the first reading today is very different, that we're accustomed to hearing uh, from the um, Acts of the Apostles, but today we hear from the book of, um, the book of um, Genesis. It's because we celebrate the feast of St. Joseph the Worker today. Um, and I think it's uh, appropriate that we celebrate it uh, St. Joseph the Worker during this time, especially considering many of us don't have the opportunity to work right now. Um, it'd be nice if we, because we've heard this first reading from the book of Genesis so many times, to maybe go back and reread it through the lens of this feast day today, which is uh, speaking about work. So, in the book of uh, Genesis, we see God working. He works for six days and then rests on the seventh day. Um, probably putting in a little more than um, 40 hours a week, it seems. Um, God is, uh, takes, makes it a point to rest on the seventh day. Why? Because he's tired, obviously. He's been doing a lot of work. No, that's not the reason. God is perfect. The work that God is doing does not tire him out. This is set as an example for us to see this, uh, this rhythm or this um, interplay of work and rest is part of what makes us human, is part of what makes us in God's image and likeness. And we have to remember we cannot create God in our image and likeness. Oh, God was tired. He needed, he needed to rest because he had all that, you know, a lot to build the skies and the stars and everything, okay? So the reality is that you and I, because we are made in the image and likeness of God, our final end purpose, our goal, is rest. That's what we were created for. Not as a means to an end to work, but our end is to rest in Christ Jesus. But before we do that, we are all called 
to participate in his mission. And that's where the work comes in. Any work that we do, if it's done with great love, if it's done with faith in Jesus Christ, knowing that it is God himself who ordained that we work, and we do it with God and for God, then any work that we do can be made into holy work. And it can bring us and our fellow sisters and brothers closer to God. We might feel that absence in our hearts because we don't, we haven't had the opportunity to work. And so much of our identity is based in what we do. But God sees us not so much as doctors, lawyers, nurses, priests, but as his children of one heavenly father, all striving to live out their, their calling according to the unique gifts that each of us has been given by God himself. In this month of May, we ask our Blessed Mother to intercede for us as we present our petitions to our Lord. That all of us may be nourished and transformed by Christ in the Eucharist. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the word of God may put an end to violence in the name of religion between nations and peoples. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That persecuted Christians throughout the world may be protected by God within their homes and churches. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the newly initiated in our community may be led by Jesus into deeper communion with him this Easter season. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our deceased loved ones, especially the benefactors of this parish, may feast forever with Christ at his heavenly banquet. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those affected by the coronavirus, for whom this Mass is offered. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our personal intentions. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of mercy and love, hear and answer these and all our prayers through our risen Lord and Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. O God, fount of all mercy, look upon our offerings, which we bring before your majesty in commemoration of St. Joseph, and mercifully grant that the gifts we offer may become the means of protection for those who call upon you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. And on the Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, 
and on the commemoration of St. Joseph, to give you fitting praise, to glorify you and bless you. For this just man was given by you as spouse to the Virgin Mother of God, and set as a wise and faithful servant in charge of your household, to watch like a father over your only begotten son, who was conceived by the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit, our Lord Jesus Christ. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore and powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exaltation. May our voices we pray join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Gregory our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, and with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the 
blessed apostles, St. Anne, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, you may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, is now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Let's pray.
Having fed upon heavenly delights, we humbly ask you, O Lord, that by St. Joseph's example, cherishing in our hearts the signs of your love, we may ever enjoy the fruit of perpetual peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. For the month of May, Pope Francis has, at, has a prayer um, pleading for the intercession of Mary, and so we will pray this prayer in lieu of the St. Michael the Archangel prayer. O Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the foot of the cross were united with Jesus' suffering and persevered in your faith. Protectress of the Roman people, you know our needs, and we know that you will provide, so that, as at Cana in Galilee, joy and celebration may return after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the will of the Father and to do what Jesus tells us. For he took upon himself our suffering and burdened himself with our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God, do not despise our petitions and our necessities, but deliver us always from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, Come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.